So good afternoon. Welcome to the Mobility for All Using Lyft workshop. We're recording this session um, so that people can watch the session afterwards at um, any point on their own schedule. Um, so we are going to be doing things a little bit differently than we normally do just to make sure that we're covering all of our bases with people watching this on their own. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So um, today we're doing using Lyft. And I just want to go over some of the Zoom features. Um, there are three different ways to access our typical online meetings you, um, using Zoom. You can download the um, app on your tablet or on your phone or on your computer and open it up um, on, in that particular app. You can also open it or uh, join from a browser. So you don't have to download the app when you join a Zoom meeting. You could just click down below at join in browser and it will open it up in your default browser that you have on your computer or your device. Um, and you can also call into the meeting. So the invite that uh, we would send out to you would have a phone number and you could just click on that. So if for any reason you lose connection during this meeting, you can rejoin the meeting um, using your phone at any point. We'll go over a couple of housekeeping features for Zoom. Um, just in general, um, video helps with communication. You don't have to um, have your video on, but it does help us um, understand what some of, the, um, some of the issues you may be having, um, just to be able to see um, on your phone or whatever. Also, we are asking people to mute themselves if they're not speaking so that we don't get background noise. Um, also, we have the chat function, um, which you can communicate with our group just by uh, clicking on that chat and typing a comment in, and we have um, somebody watching that during this presentation. You can also see who else is participating in the meeting by clicking on the participants and it will pull up a panel that will list out everybody's name. Um, and then we are recording this meeting again uh, to be able to share with other people so that they don't have to show up at a virtual meeting time. So we're going to go ahead and start with introductions. Um, you'll be able to mute and unmute yourself in the bottom corner and you can um, turn on your video for the introduction. I'm going to stop sharing so that we get to see each other's faces, uh, but basically what we want is your name, the city that you're in, and if you've ever used Lyft before. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. Um, so I will go ahead and start. My name is Angel Bond and I'm the Mobility for All Program Manager. I live in Westminster, but I work in Boulder, and um, I do use Lyft. I don't use it super frequently, but I use it as a backup option in case I miss my bus or in case um, I have to be somewhere at a very particular time and my bus schedule doesn't work out for me. Um, so I'll go ahead and um, introduce Leonard. Leonard, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Leonard Satonja. I'm one of the technology ambassadors for Mobility for All. Uh, we are here to give you personalized help after you've gone through the training and you have questions. Normally, before COVID, we would have even been able to go on a ride with you to show you how it works and um, help you with other questions. But now, during the pandemic, we're going to limit our availability to phone calls or maybe a one-on-one -on -one Zoom or other uh, televideo meeting so that we can answer your questions. I'm from NIWAP and uh, I've used Lyft a fair bit. It's a very easy to use, convenient application, a way to get around. Great, thank you, Leonard. Um, next I'll have Jen introduce herself. I am Jen Oaks. I live in Boulder and I do when I'm an ambassador. And I think this is really important because it gives you freedom, which as a person who does not drive, that's really important. And yes, I use Lyft a lot. I use it probably that in the bus. Lyft is cheaper usually, so I like that. And yeah, 
um, I'm here to help you learn, so don't be afraid to ask. Great, thank you, Jen. So next we'll have Aiden introduce himself. Hi, I'm Aiden Johan. Um, I work with Angel at Mobility for All. Um, I live in Erie and also work in Boulder. And I use Lyft pretty infrequently, but I use it to sometimes if I need to get to the airport um, or if I'm gonna be drinking and don't wanna be driving home. Um, for things like that, I'll oftentimes catch a Lyft um, to get back home. Right, thank you. And we will get a little bit more into what the ambassadors do at, um, a little bit later in the presentation. I'm gonna share my um, screen again. Can you all see it? Thumbs up? Okay, great. Um, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about Mobility for All. Uh, we are a Boulder County program that focuses on equitable, affordable, and accessible transportation options for limited mobility individuals. So I know that that's a pretty wonky explanation, but basically we work, um, we're in the field of trying to give people transportation options. We call it multimodal transportation. And what that just means is that we want you to have options. We want you to have backup options. We want you to be able to um, use different modes for different purposes. And we really do believe that transportation is um, one of the social determinants of health and is an essential linchpin service to accessing all other aspects of your life. So what we see is that people usually are chugging along just fine until their car breaks down or until um, there's a service cut for their bus and then they don't have backup options. So what we're trying to do is build that personal resiliency um, with your transportation choices. And by limited mobility individuals, uh, we're pretty broad in that definition. We just know that um, we focus on older adults, individuals with disabilities, low-income households, and primary Spanish speakers are the, our four main demographic groups that we serve. So first and foremost, I wanna acknowledge the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, the pandemic has exposed inequities among a lot of people, a lot of um, access to transportation. So we know that there are some people who are vulnerable and they can't go out. Um, and travel during this time. And there are some people who are essential workers and they have to go out. Um, so we don't necessarily want people to expose themselves to the virus if they don't feel comfortable. Uh, but we also realize that people are in different stages and feel um, different levels of comfort in traveling. We also know that COVID has changed the way that people are traveling. So we're seeing an increase in people walking and biking places. We're also seeing an increased use in on-demand services versus fixed route transit service. Um, and also it's changing um, how um, the transportation providers, like what their responsibilities are. So there's increased cleaning responsibilities. Um, they need to disinfect the vehicles. It's also transforming service delivery. So we see nonprofits like um, via mobility services, delivering groceries to people, uh, delivering food boxes from the food pantries. Um, and we're hoping to see some of those changes to that reverse delivery and um, delivering items to people. We're hoping that that will continue after the pandemic, um, but it's one of the positive, quote unquote, positive things that have come out of this. So we just wanna acknowledge um, the pandemic and that every, different people have different comfort levels with traveling during this time. So we do have a workshop series. There's using Lyft, using Uber, using the transit app, using the RTD mobile ticketing app and Google Maps. During Google Maps, we do focus on multimodal transportation. So we don't just focus on using your car. So we do have five different options and we will have videos available for all five of those. So the goals of this workshop are to increase confidence using Lyft. We also would like to connect you with the ambassadors that you met. Um, we have nine active ambassadors throughout the uh, Boulder County area currently. Um, so hopefully we'll, we're able to match you with an ambassador that's in your community so that you can ask specific questions um, that you have in your community around transportation access. At the end of this workshop, um, everybody will receive $50 um, to try Lyft out. And the reason why we do that is because we find that 
if people don't use new technology that they've learned within a couple of weeks, then they're less likely to ever use that technology again. So at the end of this, you'll be able to complete a survey. And those of you who are watching the video, your ambassador that connected you with the video will be able to give you the survey link so that you can take it afterwards and still receive the credits. But after you complete the survey, we will issue $50 to your account that you use um, for you to try out. It also is a way to um, get people to not be scared of losing money by trying something that may um, that they may not feel comfortable, that there may be a cancellation, or that something may go wrong in that process. So we're just trying to build up that, um, that confidence to be able to try the new service. So again, our technology ambassadors, um, I mentioned we had about nine active ambassadors throughout Boulder County. And in non-COVID times, they would go out with people on their first trip and kind of demystify the whole process, make it a little bit more social, um, something a little bit more interactive. Um, and we also uh, rely on our ambassadors heavily to network with people and promote the trainings that we have. Um, but I don't know if um, Leonard or Jen want to hop in again and talk a little bit more about why they chose to volunteer as an ambassador? I'll go ahead. Um, I am really enjoy uh, playing around with technology and uh, mobile phones and computers and things like that. And um, I think these applications make this so easy to do, make a ride sharing and other alternatives to, to uh, driving your own car. They make them so easy to use. That's, re that's really an attractive feature. Uh, and that would be compared to having to make a phone call probably and give your address over the phone and correct mistakes, have potential mistakes. And so I think this is um, a really good chance for me with my technical background to help out people and uh, help out, help them getting around. And uh, I'm, a proponent of alternative transportation. So this is a good, this is a good match. Great. We're glad to have you. Jen, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about why you volunteered. Yeah. Um, I'm in a wheelchair now and I wasn't for many years. So I went from driving myself to having to rely on others, which is not easy. And this gives me a way to be more independent and I get it's so easy. Like everyone should learn how to do it. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for sharing. So going to the next slide, I just wanted to talk about how um, what we're going to show you may not look exactly what like what you see on your phone. Um, because the iPhone and the Android systems, they all look a little bit different. So even though it's the same app, they have to design the app for that particular phone type. Also, even if you have an iPhone, it probably won't look exactly like this. One is because we took these screenshots um, on an older version of the app. And two, it really depends on what version of your phone you have. Um, and then you're constantly doing updates. So. We don't want that to scare you. Um, we're just trying to build that confidence. Um, it's not gonna look exactly like what we're showing you. And um, there's just no way that we would be able to continually keep up with all of the updates that they do. So we will walk you through different items that may not be exactly like what you're gonna see, but um, just let us know, contact your ambassador, email us if you have questions and something doesn't look like what we've shown you. We also want to say that we understand that everybody has different preferences with how they use their phone. And there are amazing things that you can do with your phone as from, from an accessibility standpoint. And, you know, they have screen readers, they have so many accessibility features. And um, I'm not an expert in that. Um, we aren't experts in those accessibility features. Um, but if you do have if you do have more questions about how to set up your phone from an accessibility standpoint, we can connect you with our Center for Independent Living. Um, in Boulder County, it is the um, Center for People with Disabilities, and we can help get you a little bit more assistance on how to customize your phone from an accessibility standpoint. Also, what we want to talk about before we really get into the app is safety. 
apps aren't perfect and sometimes they will have you cross the street in a place that may not be safe. Um, so just keep in mind that people are putting the data into the app um, and it's not necessarily always perfect. So use your intuition on what's safe to do on the street. Make sure that you cross the street um, at a sidewalk or at a crosswalk area. Um, make sure that you're following um, your gut as far as like what is safe and keeping yourself safe in the process. Additionally, these apps that we go over, they do use more battery life on your phone. So it's really important to make sure that when you go out using these apps that you have a charged phone. Um, and also write down an emergency contact number um, that you have in your purse or in your wallet so that you have a phone number on you in case your phone dies or in case something happens, you lose your phone. Uh, we don't want you to have all, all of your emergency contacts in your phone if your phone dies. So we will go into that a little bit more when we talk about the worksheet that we're gonna go over. Additionally, we understand that a lot of you have privacy considerations. Um, and we can't necessarily um, we can't necessarily speak to all like the ever changing privacy information at Lyft. So go to lyft.com/privacy um, and check out what their newest privacy recommendations or privacy information is. Uh, I will say that Lyft collects information like your name, your email, your phone number, the duration of your trips, your financial transactions, but they do meet the um, certain specifications for online financial transactions. And additionally, as far as protecting your privacy, when we, uh, when Mobility for All pays for passes or credits for you to use, Lyft doesn't provide us that level of information, letting us know that Jen went to the doctor on Saturday at 9 a.m. Um, it, they just don't provide us that level of information. What they will provide us is uh, um, information on um, the fact that we issued so many credits and a certain percentage of those credits were used. So let's say that we issued $100, they would tell us that $35 of that was used and uh, it was used to pay for four trips. They won't necessarily tell us specifically that Leonard or Jen or Aiden took those trips. So just rest assured that even in the case that we are paying for the um, paying for the trips for people who request them, um, Lyft does not provide us information on how you are using those credits. So I want to just um, do a couple of um, housekeeping or definitions here. Um, I'll throw away around a couple of terms occasionally: ride hailing or ride sharing. And um, what ride hailing is is it's really similar to a taxi but you have to go through an online application. So Uber and Lyft are the two most common ride hailing um, services. And what they really do is have the driver use their own vehicle. Um, so it ends up being a little bit cheaper than a taxi because, the, um, because that capital investment, that um, the company Uber and Lyft, they don't have to buy the cars necessarily. So when you get into one of these um, Uber or Lyft cars, you're really getting into a car that is owned by somebody else and they might be doing um, driving Lyft or Uber on the side um, to make a little bit of money when they go to and from work or some of them may even be full-time drivers that make a living off of um, using their car to take people places. Um, but what um, they have improved upon from the traditional taxi that you would call a dispatcher is that um, that online communication, the app that you have on your phone can directly um, through the system communicate with the driver's app. And so there's no need to negotiate where you're at um, or figure out all of those details. The phones are able to just connect. Um, and I'm doing an overly simplified uh, explanation of it. Uh, but basically, the advantage is that it's quicker because you don't have to necessarily go through a call center. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Aiden to cover the COVID um, information. As Angel mentioned up top, COVID has certainly changed how we're all traveling, um, or for many of us probably not traveling right now. Um, but if you are going to be using Uber or using Lyft, there are some safety precautions that uh, should be taken before you go on your trip. Um, there's a list directly from the Uber app there on the right. And these things include 
if you have any symptoms, um, stay home, you know, cancel your trip, stay home, um, wear a face covering. Both you and your driver will be wearing them. And if your driver is not wearing one, you don't have to take that trip. You don't, if they show up and they don't have a mask on, you can decline that. Um, so make sure you have a mask. Keeping your hands clean. I always like to carry one of those small little bottles of hand sanitizer, but if that's not an option. Always making sure that I'm washing my hands as soon as I arrive at my location. Um, sitting in the back seat, if you took lift uh, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you were able to sit up front next to the driver. Now, during the pandemic, um, drivers will ask you to sit in the back. So you'll be sitting in the back seat um, and when possible, just keeping the windows open a little bit to get some of that air circulation going through the car is always a good idea as well. When you go to book your trip, it will remind you of these rules. So you will see before you hit continue to accept your ride if you requested it, it will give you this quick reminder on the commitment to health and safety. So this don't ride if you have COVID symptoms, wearing a face covering, keeping the car clean um, as well as your hands, um, leaving that front seat empty. So again, sitting in the back and then keeping those windows open when possible for the circulation. So even before you book your, tri your trip, Lyft will show you this little reminder just to keep it fresh um, at the top of your mind. So if you are traveling, make sure you're following those precautions. As I mentioned, all drivers will be wearing masks. Um, if they are not, you do not have to take that ride. You can say, I'm not comfortable with that and request a different one. Um, make sure that you're keeping your hands clean. The drivers are also cleaning their cars um, as well and all shared rides have been suspended. So in the past, there was an option for a shared ride, which means it was an, a lift ride where you would be with strangers who are also going on the same route. So maybe you're, you'd stop halfway and pick someone else up. Those rides are suspended right now. Um, one thing to note, you can still travel with a family member. So if you lived in the same house and you requested a ride for two of you, you know, your driver would still pick up both of you from your home, but you would not be making another stop to pick up a stranger. So those shared rides are suspended throughout the pandemic. Great, thank you. So for these presentations, there are um, three different items that we will go over. There are handouts, uh, which your ambassador will be able to send you a link to. Uh, we don't currently have these posted on our website, but we are in the process of adding them, so you'll be able to access them on our website. There's also this presentation, which we will also have on the website, and we have a trip planning worksheet, which is available on the website as well. So I'm going to go over the trip planning worksheet a little bit before we get started on how to download the app. Um, what we've done is the five different apps that we have workshops for. We have a little bit of information on the back side about these uh, workshops, but what we've also given you is some information on transportation resources that you can call and talk to directly or email somebody. Um, and the reason why we've done that is because we realize that um, there may be a point where the app just isn't working for you and you need to contact another organization for a trip. So we've really focused on ones that have call centers where you can talk to somebody. So if you're planning a transit trip, you can always talk to RTD Trip Planner. Um, if you are an Accessoride customer, you can contact Accessoride to get um, an ADA complimentary paratransit trip. Via Mobility Services is a local community transit provider um, in Boulder County. Actually, they've expanded to the Denver region as well. Z-Trip is the local taxi um, that you could call as a backup option. GoGo -Go Grandparent is a company that actually uh, requests Uber and Lyft trips on behalf of people who don't have smartphones. So if you get to the point where you've tried the app and it just doesn't work, um, you can um, call GoGo -Go Grandparent. It is a little bit more expensive because they pay for the dispatch. Um, they pay for the person, the call center, to be able to request those Lyft and Uber trips on your behalf. Dr. Mack is the Denver Regional Mobility and Access Council, and they have the Getting Their Guide, which uh, lists a bunch of volunteer driver programs throughout the Denver region. The um, Area Agency on Aging has a resource line that if you um, have any questions about aging resources in Boulder County, they'll be able to refer you to them. 
Faith in Action is a local volunteer driver program that is not working right now during COVID, uh, but they are available to people. There's also Medicaid transportation. Um, if you are a Medicaid member, then you would call this Intelride number to sign up before you request the trip, and then they would request a trip, or they would request a um, a trip on your behalf. This was formerly Veo, but it's now Intelride. So um, on the back of this sheet here, we also have a place for you to write your emergency contact number. And um, the, way we, the, the way that we envision this is that you could potentially print this out and um, keep your individualized trip plan in your purse or in your wallet um, so that you can carry it with you. On the front side of this, we actually have a worksheet where you can fill out what your top destinations are and kind of go through the apps ahead of time. Um, and the way we had envisioned it is each of those five apps, you could look to see how you get to your typical destinations and see if there's another way that seems reasonable to you. What we're really trying to get at with this um, table is that there are trade-offs in transportation choices. People are trading off the cost of that transportation option with how much time it's gonna take them, the um, opportunity cost analysis. So what we want to help, what we're hoping this form helps you do is really look at how you typically get to someplace like your doctor's office, um, maybe you currently get a ride from a friend, and seeing if you can have a backup option, seeing if you can look to see if the bus goes there from your house to your doctor's office, and maybe that could be your backup option. Um, seeing it, how much it would cost if you took an Uber or Lyft to go to that doctor appointment. So we really have like your starting address, where do you typically go? Um, this could be an address or it could just be the title, the name of it, you know, you could put down church, um, the grocery store, pharmacy, doctor's office, whatever the typical places that you go, how you normally get there and what that cost is and any notes. So this, these notes section, could be useful when you get into transit planning. So if you're gonna be taking a bus somewhere and you need to transfer and there may be schedule changes, you could make any notes here. So at this point, I just want um, our ambassadors to think of a couple of places that they go at least once a month um, and just share that with, our, uh, with the group. And we'll keep those destinations in mind when we do the practice session with Lyft. So uh, Leonard, do you wanna go first? And are there a couple sure. places? Um, I live in Niwot, so uh, I like going to the public library. And then one that's convenient for me is the Longmont Public Library. I also like to go to a coffee shop um, that's not far from that route. It's the Red Frog Coffee that's on uh, Ken Pratt. Okay, great. So what about you, Jen? Are there places that you go uh, at least once a month that you would like to? Yeah. I used live to go to the hairdresser once a month. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice because they're in Boulder, so it doesn't cost much and like, it's a good deal. Yeah. And also, I use it to go grocery shopping or to church or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay, so we'll get into those, um, those destinations a little bit when we're doing your individualized trip plans. So we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, with the how to download. We do have a video that is also posted on the website um, that specifically walks through this in more real time. Uh, but we, the reason why we do this step by step um, during the workshops is because um, some people need a little bit extra assistance and we realize that that video goes a little bit too quickly. So first, uh, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna go to the App Store if you have an iPhone or Google Play Store if you have an Android. And you will go to the search bar and click uh, or type in Lyft. This is where um, some people get um, stopped because maybe their kids or somebody else set up their iPhone or set up their phone for them and they don't necessarily know their password you are going to need to know your Google sign-in information or your Apple ID and password in order to download the apps. If you don't um, have that, um, it's a good thing to get those in place before you even start trying to do this. 
Um, after you search for Lyft in the search bar, um, sometimes there's paid advertisements at the top, but you'll look for this big pink, um, big pink app here, and you click on get or install, depending on what type of phone you have. After you do that, um, it will um, you will it will download the app for you, and you will want to allow Lyft access to your location while you're using the app. The reason why this is important is because um, Uber and Lyft are really efficient because you don't have to type in exactly where you're at. That phone using that geolocation is able to communicate with the app um, and with the system where you're at exactly. So um, I, would, uh, I would allow this. Um, if you don't feel comfortable, you can, um, you can say I don't allow them to have access to my location, but just keep in mind that you're gonna have to manually enter all of the addresses um, if you do it that way, and it is gonna be a little bit more challenging. So after you allow or don't allow, you would get started. At that point, you're gonna need to create an account. So you will use your cell phone number, and just keep in mind that Lyft does associate your account with your cell phone number, not necessarily your email address. So that's how they center it. So you would enter in your phone number and then it will send you a code to your um, text messages. So some of the phones, um, they're really good at just copying it directly from your, um, from your messages. But if you do have to leave the app to go to your text messages, um, I would write down that um, those four or six digit numbers, I think they are six digits now, write that down and then go back to the app to enter those in. So this is what it looks like, the six digit. Um, this is on an iPhone. Um, some of the Androids will, um, will do this, I believe, now too. So um, if you have um, this situation where it um, just brings it up, you can just click on that and it will automatically paste that code into this area. So then it's going to ask you if you want to allow for push notifications. I would recommend doing it. And typically I'm one of the people who doesn't allow any of my apps to um, do any notifications because I don't like the constant dinging. Um, but in this case, it really is uh, more beneficial if you allow push notifications because they will let you know when your car is five minutes away or they'll let you know if there's any update to your trip. So um, from that standpoint, if you don't want to just have your app open all the time waiting for your car, then I think it's worthwhile having the push notifications. So then that's it. Um, the screen is going to look a little bit differently now. They've had a little bit, um, uh, they've had some updates. But basically, um, when you go here, um, you're able to just enter in your destination and kind of start. Um, right here, they say add payment method. Since you're watching this video, um, I would recommend doing that at your own pace. You can pause this video and add your payment method. And I'll walk through how to um, actually, I won't walk through how to do that, but um, I'll go through it at later point in the uh, presentation. If you don't want to do it right at the beginning, then you can skip adding payment method. So then you're ready to book a ride. So in this search destination um, field here, you can enter an exact address of a place, or you can enter in just the title of the, um, the location that you want to go to. Keep in mind though, if you're going to a place that has a lot of different, um, a lot of different stores, uh, like a, a King Supers, you'll need to know what street it's on at least um, to be able to know which one to select. But what you'll see here is this little blue dot is where you're located um, when you bring up this phone, or this on, this on your phone. And these cars that are kind of swarming around this little dot, those are the cars that are currently available. They'll be moving a little bit and you'll see that in the demonstration that I'll do. Um, but you'll click on the search destination and you can type in general terms like grocery store or general terms like, um, like the airport and then they'll try to guess where you're trying to go. So then um, there's actually, it doesn't go back and forth now, it's kind of up and down. You can select what type of a lift you want. So there is a shared option in non-COVID times, 
but what that means is you'll save a little money by selecting that. You'll see in this particular case, this trip was $9.64 for shared versus $14.99 for um, a lift with four people. You'll, um, so it's quite a bit cheaper. So in non-COVID times, what that would say, you would select the shared to get it um, and they, they would be able to stop along the way to pick up somebody if that person is less than five minutes away from the route. Um, so there are a couple different options. There are shared, which is not available right now. There's economy, which um, is the standard, I believe. There's extra, extra seats, which are gonna pay a little bit more money for that. There's also luxury. Um, and then you would just scroll up and down to be able to see those options. And it will let you know when you're doing this um, before you select the lift, it'll give you some information about when the vehicle is gonna be there to pick you up. So it'll tell you here in this particular example for that blue dot, they say that the pickup is three minutes away. And it will tell you at what point, at what time you're going to arrive underneath the cost. So at this uh, particular, this particular example, it looks like they were looking at 8.20 a.m. And it looks like the vehicle would be there in three minutes and that they would arrive at their destination um, at 8.46 a.m. So um, the cost, you can pre-schedule trips if you are in a location that has predictable numbers of vehicles, I guess, maybe not numbers of vehicles, but if it's in an area where there's generally a lot of Lyft drivers, then you're gonna be able to pre-schedule that trip. And then you lock in the price um, and you can pre-schedule seven days in advance. This option isn't always available, in particular if you're in areas like um, Northern Longmont or Erie, uh, where there's just not a lot of demand for Lyft, they don't have the schedule a Lyft option available for you. So once you enter in the address where you want to go, you can set the pickup. Um, here on this screen, you see um, a map and a pen, this purple pen in the middle. Um, where the person is in this blue dot, that's they're inside of a, um, a building this right here. Um, and it's suggesting that they walk out to the sidewalk um, at this location. You can actually move this map by putting two fingers on the map and dragging the map. The pin will stay in the middle, but you can move the map to where you have the pin where you want it to pick you up. And um, yeah, and then the, the car will come to that particular location. And then you would just set that pickup. You can add a pickup note, uh, like I'm wearing a purple jacket or I'm in front of the store entryway um, or information like that so that they have a little bit more um, details on the trip. And I don't know, Jen, if you want to talk about uh, what you typically put in the note when you're requesting um, a Lyft trip. Yeah, I always put that I'm in a wheelchair in the note because some drivers cannot help me or do wheelchairs. So that way they know before they come, <laughs> which yeah. is important. Yeah, and just to clarify, you're in a manual wheelchair that you can collapse, so that's how yeah. you're able to use Lyft. Yeah. Make sure you can tell them how to break it down, because they don't know how, what they're doing, so you have to tell them. But don't be afraid to, because it's your wheelchair that they're dealing with. Yeah, that's a good point. And it's also good to note that like they aren't necessarily trained on how to treat people in wheelchairs. So yeah. like with yeah. So like with via mobility services, you know, all of those drivers are trained on how to help people in wheelchairs and um, disability etiquette. Uh, whereas the Lyft drivers may not, um, they may not be aware of disability etiquette and they may not have ever broken down a wheelchair before. So um, that's good to know. Yeah. And then also by putting that comp, oh, I'm sorry, Jen, go ahead. Oh, drivers are usually really excited to learn how to do it. So that's another good thing. 
Yeah, that is. That's good to know that you've had a good experience with that. So um, after you, if you don't want to type in the notes for the driver, when you get a confirmed driver, you're able to contact that driver. So um, in this particular case, we have, um, you get the driver's name, the make and model of the car, the driver's rating, the license plate, and a contact icon. So I'll walk you through each of these. Um, so after you're matched with that driver, um, this driver's name is Aaron. And we see that he's in a Honda CRV. It looks like it's blue. We see that his ratings are five stars. We get a picture of him. And then right here underneath this vehicle, you'll actually get the license plate number. So it's XQI here. You also can edit the ride right here. So if you place that trip request um, by mistake, you can edit and cancel here. It has some safety tools. Um, and then they have a contact button. So if you didn't feel comfortable typing in your comments um, in the previous um, slide, then you can just click on this and call Aaron and talk to him. Um, just, it's good to note that you are not calling Aaron with your phone number. It's actually through the app. So Aaron's not gonna have your phone number to be able to call you at different times, right? Um, so you can call and through the app, it'll contact him and you can talk to him on the phone and say specifically, I'm in a wheelchair. It's a manual wheelchair that I can, that I, I would like you to break down. Are you comfortable doing that, right? And then um, also some more information that we have is at the bottom, you have passengers. This particular person, it looks like, did the shared uh, lift. So basically it's telling them who else is in that vehicle, right? So if you um, request a shared ride and you realize that you don't really, um, that there's somebody already in the car and that you don't really want to be the fourth person in this car, you can go ahead and go up to edit and cancel. Keep in mind though that if you cancel this trip um, less than five minutes, you may get charged a cancellation fee depending on when you have requested that trip. So if a car has to drive quite a bit of ways to get to you and you cancel it two minutes before they get there, then you're probably gonna get charged that cancellation fee. So when you wait for your ride, um, you want to meet your Lyft driver outside the main entrance. You want to look for um, cars that have the sticker and logo in the window. They're typically on the passenger side. And don't be surprised if you see an Uber and Lyft sticker because some of the drivers drive for both of the companies. Um, and then wait for the driver to confirm your name. So when people are afraid of using Uber and Lyft because they've heard of horrible instances in the news, usually that's because people got into a car that actually wasn't their matched um, Lyft driver. Um, and so if you, if the driver pulls up, um, the way that I do it typically is I look for the color of the vehicle and the type of the vehicle. So I see that this is a mini SUV type. I'll see if there's a blue one coming, I'll pay a little bit more attention to the license plate to make sure it matches. And then if they pull up, um, I'll have Aaron ask, are you Angel? And then I can say, yes, are you Aaron? And then we're good to go. So just don't uh, volunteer your name because that allows the opportunity for bad actors. If you were saying, if you ask if they're, are you my Lyft driver? Then they're gonna say yes, if they're a bad actor, right? Um, so you wanna make sure that they are receiving your information through the system. They have a bunch of cool, um, some of them have some cool things like a little display in front where it will display your name or something like that. Um, but they get all of your personal, all of your information from the app, the account that you created. So here are some more safety tips that are in the handout. Um, so stay inside until your ride is getting close whenever possible. That just minimizes the amount of time that you're standing outside. Um, just confirm that you're getting into the correct car. Uh, make sure that it, the license plate number matches up, the type of car, the color of the car. Um, and then have the driver confirm your name instead of confirming the driver's name. Um, it's good to sit in the back seat, wear your seat belts, um, check the um, driver's rating. I didn't go over that too much, but here we know that he has five stars. We don't necessarily see how many people that is, but that's a really good rating. So um, at the, I'll show you where you're able to give reviews afterwards too. 
So, and then also never pay cash. So there's no need to take money out of your wallet. Um, I know that sometimes people want to tip in cash, but um, it really just, it's better if it's safer for the driver that they're not carrying cash and it's safer for you not to have your cash up. So um, all of the transactions should go through your app and through a credit card or your account that you're paying with. So then after the trip, um, this will automatically pop up, this um, type of a screen. It doesn't look exactly like this, but it allows you the option to um, click on no tip, a 15%, 20%, 25, or custom tip. Um, just keep in mind that the tip isn't as important. So if you're on a fixed income, uh, don't worry. Um, it's all right if you don't tip. But what is really good for the driver is to give them a good review. So if you rate your driver five stars or um, write a comment about how nice they were um, or something like that, that's going to mean more to your driver than a tip because that's going to increase the number of people who want to take a trip with that particular driver. Um, so after you, um, if you don't fill this out, which you don't always have to, um, it will just automatically charge you for the cost of the trip. Um, and if you get the credits from us, it'll come out of that, those credits first. But if you do want to tip or leave a review, then you can send it to Lyft. So I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration now. Um, do we have any questions before I get into the demonstration? I have a question. I was wondering about uh, after taking the class and getting the credits to use Lyft, um, does the tip come out of those credits? No, you can't. That's a good question, Leonard. You can't actually pay for the tips using the credits that we give you. So it will, if you do tip on a trip that um, you're using Mobility for All credits to pay for, then it will charge just the tip from your credit card account that you have on file. That's a good question, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing this. I have another question. Oh, so, hey, Anna, I didn't even see you were here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, hello, so if you wanna use the credits, do you have to add your credit card? No, uh, for Lyft, yes, you do. You do have to have a credit card on file. So, um, yeah. Um, so actually, in order to have an account, like a valid account, you do have to have a credit card on file. You don't have to necessarily have a credit card. You can have a debit card or you can link it with your, um, you can link it with like a Venmo account or a PayPal account as well now. So they're getting a little bit more inclusive as far as payment methods go. One other payment option at the grocery store, you can get a Lyft gift card and you could link that as your payment if you want to do it that way as well. So I don't think that they actually have it um, in Colorado. I'll have to double check, but at some point they did not have them available in Colorado. Uber did, but not Lyft. But let me check, like I did see that um, they've added an option to buy like Lyft cash and I'll show that in the demonstration, but okay. Um, so welcome Anna. I don't know if you wanna introduce yourself really quickly before we get into the demonstration. Um, yeah, so I'm Ana Colon from Mobility for All, and I live in Denver. And do you use Lyft? Um, I'll use it once in a while over the weekend. Um, well, at least before COVID, if I wanted to go out with friends. Okay, great. Welcome. So I keep all of my travel apps in one folder on my phone. So this is my messy um, phone here, but I just have travel. Um, and then I have Lyft, Uber at the top. I also have like the B-Cycle, the RT Mobile Ticketing. I have Airbnb in here just because when I travel, I use Airbnb, not because it's a transportation app. But um, I'll go ahead and click on Lyft and it opens it up. And it basically, I'm in Westminster, so it just has that blue dot where I'm at. Um, up at the top, it says you have credit from Boulder County. That's what it's gonna look like when you get credits from us. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do a trip uh, from, I'm actually going to, it automatically uses your start location as your current location. So if you want to override that, what you can do is click on start and I can enter in my start location as NIWAT. 
So I'm going to say that my start location is Niwot, let's do elementary. So my start location is Niwot Elementary. I can put my end destination as Longmont Public Library. So I just start typing Longmont Pub, like, and it, like it has a public house, and then down below it has Longmont Public Library, the second one down. So I'm going to click on that. And it tells me that from Niwa Elementary School to Niwa Public Library, it would, um, it would take me, well, it tells me that it will take 26 minutes for a vehicle, a, a lift vehicle to come to Niwa. Um, and down below, I'm pulling this up just using my little finger. So you can, uh, using my thumb, you can just put your thumb on that bar um, that um, it's at the top and just pull and you can see what's below it. So it's giving me a few options. There's the Lyft XL. So that is extra large because it can carry five people. Um, and that one's going to cost $24.47. Keep in mind that all of these price estimates are based on what's currently available. So Uber and Lyft both do what's called surge pricing. So if there is a time of day that there's a ton of people that want to travel, they're going to raise the prices to encourage drivers to come out um, and provide more trips. So if you're traveling um, right now at like 546, it's probably rush hour, so it may be a little bit more expensive. So there's Lux, I'm not sure exactly what that is. There's Lyft, which is three people, and that one's $13.60. Um, I'm kind of cheap, so I'll probably go with that one. And it, that one can pick me up in 11 minutes from Niwa Elementary. I see that underneath the Lyft three-person pickup at 11. Um, there's also the preferred, which is, I'm not sure how that's preferred. They've changed these a little bit. There's the Lux Black XL, which is $49.91. And then there's the Lux Black, which is $38. There's no public transit currently available for that trip. And then um, I would probably select the Lyft, um, the one that can pick me up in 10 minutes. And I can click on a couple of different options. So uh, basically pick up at 10, there's a little um, down arrow that I can click on. So I'll click on that and it gives me an option. It says pick me up in 10 minutes. That one would cost $13.60. But if I wanted to wait a little bit longer and have them pick me up in 15 minutes, that one would be a little bit cheaper. So it would be $12.52. Actually, it just went down cheaper again. See, did you see how that changed? So, um, so $12.36. So if I wanted this one, I would select Lyft at the, at the bottom. And it's giving me that option to confirm my pickup spot. So again, I would use my two fingers and I would move the map to um, and see how the um, the pin stays in the same location. So I could move it to the charge point charging station. Um, and then I could add a driver note. So I could say, like, I'm, I have a walker. And then I would add the note to the driver. And then I would confirm this pickup. And so it's telling me it's trying to book the ride right now. It says that that ride, uh, my pickup window, it's going through this. I'm going to have to cancel this um, after the fact, though. So then it's telling me my pickup window is between 5.48 and 6.03. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And I do it by going to Edit Ride, which is down below the Arrive By. I'm going to cancel ride. Yep, I want to cancel that ride. So I'm not going to get charged for canceling that ride because the car wasn't within five minutes from me. Um, so another thing that I want to show you all before is that you can add an extra trip. So what I did there is I went back to at the top, there's the trip information. I click on that and um, it brings up my start address, which is that random address that I moved that pin to. And if I wanted to stop along the way, I would just click that plus 
I'll show you what that looks like. It's on the right hand side. There's a little plus symbol. Click that and I can add a stop and I could add Starbucks, let's say. So I'm adding Starbucks and they have one on South Hobart Street. I'm going to select that. And then it's recalculating how much that is. So you notice that the previous amount was like $12 and 30 some odd cents. Um, that same trip stopping at Starbucks along the way is $15.76. So that is cheaper to do a stop along the way. As long as you're gonna keep that stop short, um, it's cheaper to do that than to request one trip from NIWAT to Starbucks and then a second trip from Starbucks to, um, to the library. So then I would select that again. So do we have any questions on how that, um, how that would work? Is there any information that you'd like me to demonstrate? I have a question. I haven't used that feature of adding an, an intermediate stop. And I'm wondering, does Lyft have any policy for their drivers about how long they're willing to wait for you if you go into a shop and do something? So I, I'll have to double check and maybe on our Aiden, you can check um, like while we're doing the rest of this and chime back in. But I thought that it was as long as it was about three to five minutes. So I also have never used it, but um, some of our ambassadors in Lafayette um, at the housing authority site where we used to do the, where we have the lift pilot, um, they were the ones who actually taught me about that. And um, they were able to run into like the pharmacy to go pick up something. That was one example that they gave me. They also give me an example of just um, going through the drive through at like a fast food um, store or fast food restaurant, right? So uh, one told me that they would go pick up um, like McDonald's or something like that on the way home. Um, and um, just running into like the grocery store to like get something really quick. So I think that if I remember correctly, it was like three to five minutes, but maybe on our Aiden are able to like find it. Lyft spokesperson in this article is saying that uh, expect to keep your stop under 10 minutes. Oh, otherwise, okay, that's good. they say otherwise, just do it as two trips. But yeah. they said 10 minutes is kind of that maximum. Okay, that's good to know. And I'm assuming, Leonard, that they do charge a little bit, like while you're waiting. So the longer that you are, you're probably going to pay a little bit more. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on to um, practicing as a group? I just want to say that I've done that. I just stopped him and then did it backwards. So I just ended up, ended up contacting the driver and he figured it out for me. So don't be afraid to call the driver if you need help. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think like contacting, and also they want your business, right? So if you get in the car and just want to tell them that you want to make a stop along the way, they can do that as well. Um, yeah, so. If it's too intimidating, like actually doing the stop, then you can just talk to your driver. Good point. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this screen. Okay, and then we will um, each do our own, like we'll practice as a group. So if you have the app, um, the option that we were going to say is just to go to the Boulder Public Library and we'll just take a minute or two to um, be able to search from your current location to the Boulder Public Library and we'll just talk about like what you learned. So we'll talk about like how long it would take, when the vehicle would get to your location, um, what the cost of it is, and if you think you would actually even take that trip. So we'll take about a minute to be able to, we'll take two minutes to be able to search for the Boulder Public Library.
Okay. So um, I'll just ask a couple of people. Um, so um, Jen, I'll start with you. What did that trip look like for you? Let me go ahead and stop sharing so we can see each other. What did that trip look like for you? Well, I live, live, live right next door to the border diaper. So I did you campus. Yeah. It was nice, very easy. It, it was on these $8, but it's free because I have mobility for all credits. Yeah. So how long would that, how long would it take for you to get from your place to see you? Oh, sorry. Like only, oh, uh, like five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. So it's a short trip. And um, it's good to keep in mind that like that $8 is probably about like as low as the price will ever go because they still have to like charge like the hailing fee or whatever that is. So I haven't really seen stuff much cheaper than that. Um, yeah, so if it's a short trip, um, you still will be expected to pay about $8. Okay, that's good to know. Great, so Leonard, where did you go? Or, or like, not where did you go, but like, what did you find out? Um, I live in Niwot and, and the, um, uh, the diagonal highway is nearby, so, um, I was happy to see that it wouldn't take very long for Lyft to get here. Uh, for the option of waiting a little bit, it would be a 15 minute wait. And um, takes about 35 minutes to get to the Boulder Public Library, uh, downtown Boulder. And that would cost um, $16 and 45 cents for that wait ride. Yeah, okay, that's good to know. Okay, so we're gonna uh, move on. I know Anna and Aiden, you also did them, but we're running out of time. So, um, okay, so um, we'll, we would typically practice on our own. And I think we're going to move forward just because we only have a few more minutes before our scheduled time. But what um, I encourage you all, if you're watching this video to do is to find uh, one of your typical destinations. So I think that um, Jen, you said that your hairdresser, so like test that out, see like how much it would cost, look to see like on the other apps, like how much it would cost to do that, um, and just kind of do that cost comparison. So just find places like your doctor's appointment, your um, like your workout class that you go to, your library, your um, friend's house, just test out some of those and just see how much it would cost, um, just to kind of get a ballpark understanding. And if you want to play around with actually confirming a ride, you can practice by scheduling it in advance and then going and canceling it. And I, I, um, let's see, I think Leonard, you were gonna be able to um, show us a um, demonstration. Do you um, still feel like doing that? Sure, I can do that. I'll try to go through it quickly. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind um, seeing if you could schedule, um, show people how to schedule a trip if you have it available on your phone. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, it's starting up now. Yeah, we see it. Okay. Go to my travel apps and open up Lyft. And um, let me select going to Red Frog Coffee. And um, you can see the route there going from my house in Niwot. It does see at the top that my address is correct. So I don't need to change that. And um, I'll go ahead in the lower right, you can see the button to schedule a ride. I'll plan on meeting with a friend for coffee, socially distanced, of course, outside of Red Frog, and schedule that for tomorrow. Um, it doesn't look see. like it's available right now. Okay, oh, I'll select yeah, the lift, regular lift and schedule that for tomorrow in the afternoon, say 3.40. 
and I'll set that pickup time. You note that it says here when it's predicting that a driver would arrive uh, around my scheduled time, that could be a little off. It depends on what happens tomorrow with drivers. And I'll set that pickup time for tomorrow. It's giving me the price for tomorrow um, in my credit card. So that's all set up and I can go ahead and schedule that. And um, I see that in the upper right hand corner, there's a little calendar. So that's where they, if you have a scheduled trip, that's where it will show up. I'll go ahead and bring that up and cancel this ride because I'm not actually going to do that tomorrow. So that's a great way for you to be able to practice scheduling rides uh, without actually taking them, um, just to kind of get used to it. And um, I also wanted to point out that Leonard said that it was free on his, but that's because he has the mobility for all credits, so it automatically deducts that. Okay, thank you Leonard for doing that. And we'll go ahead and start, or wrap up here. So when you add a payment method, um, you just click on this little hamburger here and um, you're able to add, um, it will bring up the side um, bar here and um, you can click on payment down here. You can also look at your ride history and it will tell you all the rides that you took. Um, and then also if you have a promotion, so sometimes different organizations give out promotion codes. Um, if you've got a promotion code, this is where you would enter it in. Um, actually, for Lyft, for our program, uh, if you attend the workshop, you actually will get a code that you're going to have to enter into promo here. But for payments, you can add a credit card, you can add PayPal, Venmo, um, they have a bunch of different options now um, that um, just, it doesn't, it could be a debit card as well. And then sometimes they have the ability to be able to take a picture of your credit card so you don't have to manually enter it in. I like doing that because when I'm typing something in, I inevitably make a mistake. There's the month and year. There's also the CVV number, which is that three digit number on the backside. And then there's the zip code. One thing to keep in mind, if you use a prepaid debit card from um, like the grocery store that you purchase, you're gonna have to register that debit card and register it with a zip code in order to be able to use it for this. So we've ran into this problem before where somebody used uh, $50 on a prepaid card and they, were, they had to like register it before they had to, before they could use it as a payment method. So again, at the bottom, when you scroll up, there's also public transit. It's really good to always look to see um, how much the public transit would cost. Um, so for example, with my, um, my trip from Westminster going into Boulder, um, it would have cost me like $25 to take a lift and it would have cost me $5.25 to take the bus. And the time was approximately the same just because of the service level that I have where I'm at. So I probably would take the bus instead of taking Lyft. Um, so it's always good to just scroll all the way up on those options of like Lyft XL, um, the Lux and all of those to see what the transit options are. So we're not gonna do a demonstration there, but um, another thing to keep in mind is that Lyft is also offering scooters in some locations. These are not available in Boulder County, um, but you are able to scan um, if you go downtown Denver and they have them, you're able to scan the actual scooter and you can check it out using your uh, Lyft app. So after you watch this video, uh, we will, your ambassador or Mobility for All will give you a survey to complete about how we did. Um, and this is our mechanism to really learn how to improve these workshops. It's also a way for us to get information to know how to give you the Lyft credits. So we will need the cell phone number that you use to create the account. And we will need you to add the credit card account or credit card to your account before we can issue you the promo credits. So that's the end of our presentation. Um, our contact information is on this final slide. So if you call us at 720-564-2218, we can answer some of your questions or match you with an ambassador. You can also email mobilityforall at bouldercounty.org um, with any questions and we'll have somebody be able to get in touch with you and also match you with an ambassador. So that's the end of our presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing and stop recording. Thank you for joining us today.